It's fall in a sleepy town out in Vermont. The leaves cover the sidewalk and there are pumpkin decorations all over as an aging man. Tom drives around town in his truck, putting up posters for an upcoming fall festival. He stops to get his first pumpkin latte of the season, and the friendly waitress says it's on the house. When he gets back in his truck, though, he's distracted by someone waving to him and accidentally backs into the window of the coffee shop, smashing the glass and cursing. In a high-rise office in Philadelphia, meanwhile, Amy is discussing her book release with her agent. She's hoping it will go straight to the top of the bestseller list. Her agent tells her to take the weekend off to relax, because she's got a busy schedule coming up, which might even involve national television, and she's going to need the rest. Amy heads home and takes a call from her mom, who lets her know that her grandpa drove into the coffee store. He's got a sprained wrist, but luckily got off lightly. His truck is completely destroyed, though. Amy feels bad for him, knowing that the upcoming festival, Foliage Fest, is a really important time for her family, so she decides to go back to town to help her grandpa out, since he's injured and doesn't have his truck. Her mother and Tom are still at the hospital when she arrives, but he waves her off, saying she shouldn't have taken the time to go there and it's really not a big deal. Her mom, though, is grateful for her coming home. She asks if Amy could forget about what happened between her and her grandpa, just for the weekend so they can get along. Amy is frustrated, because it turns out Tom rescinded his offer to pay for her college education once she told him she wasn't going to go to business school and take over Pumpkin Everything, the family store. Instead, she followed her dream of being a writer, which her grandpa doesn't approve of. Her mom sighs, agreeing that it wasn't his best moment, but expresses that she hopes they can get along even if it's just for a short while. Amy agrees to try. Amy's mom has to take a work call, and the nurse brings Tom out in a wheelchair, letting him know the doctor's instructions. She tells him to listen to them this time, and Amy is confused at the expression but doesn't ask further. Amy offers to take Tom home so her mom can work. She drives him through town and Tom tells her about a local family business, the Golden Kettle, which shut down recently. The woman's son, Jesse, left town to become a big-time actor instead of taking over for her. And despite Amy reminding him of Jesse's success, Tom laments that he won't have any employment in 10 years when the roles dry up. Amy feels that the conversation is getting a little too pointed and tries to distract Tom by talking about the upcoming Foliage Fest. Tom is discussing arrangements for Pumpkin Everything to host a party during Foliage Fest, and Amy asks if he should really be doing that right now, as he should be resting. He waves away her concern, though, because it's the 30th anniversary and he wants to host. They stop for caramel apples, which the vendor gives Tom for free, and Amy asks about the event scheduled in the festival. Tom asks if she's able to stick around for a few days to see it, but Amy says that her book release is pressing and she's got to be back by the end of the weekend. Tom is sad to hear that she won't stay, even when she tells him about how successful she hopes her tour will be. He feels that she's putting her work above her family. They drive over to Pumpkin Everything, which is very busy because it's the right time of year. He says he's hired someone named Kit to help out and set up all the displays for Foliage Fest. Amy remembers Kit, a high school friend who she fell out with years ago, and is immediately nervous, but Tom pushes her forward saying there's no better time to try and mend fences. Reluctantly, she turns to the entrance just as Kit, a handsome man in a flannel shirt, emerges. He's surprised to see her, and says she hasn't changed, she tells him he looks a lot more grown up. The atmosphere between them is awkward, so Tom distracts Kit by asking about the displays. Kit explains he's done them purposefully to drive customers into the store, and Tom's impressed with his business acumen. He goes inside and leaves Amy and Kit by themselves. Amy's surprised that her grandpa let Kit have his creative freedom with the merchandising. Kit says he's lucky to have the job because her grandpa gave him a shot when everyone else had given up on him. Amy doesn't know what to say, feeling a little guilty, when Tom emerges again. Kit forces him to go home and rest, to Amy's gratitude, and he watches her lead Tom away with a confused and wistful expression. Tom explains that Kit has been helping around the house as well. Amy asks tentatively how Kit's been doing, and Tom shrugs, saying he needed a shoulder when he was alone. Amy feels immensely guilty about leaving town as her grandpa says that they always brought out the best in each other. His house is just as she remembers it, but she finds it in a total mess inside, and knows she's got her work cut out for her that weekend. Her grandpa feels awkward, explaining that it was all stuff he was going to get around to doing, but Amy tells him not to worry and she'll help him while his wrist is healing. They discuss the past while looking through Tom's things, and Amy starts to clean up, not wanting to leave the household chores unfinished. He asks her to stop, though, and reluctantly she agrees, even though she wants to help. It's clear there's a lot of unresolved issues that he needs to deal with, but she doesn't feel like she can bring it up with him now. She steps outside for some air after making him a cup of tea. She's sitting on a bench in the garden when Kit approaches, bringing groceries. Amy tells him Tom's inside if he wants to talk, but he replies that he's just going home. She's confused, and Kit hesitantly explains that he's staying in the guest house. He's worried that she'll be upset, but she's happy, pleased to know her grandpa has someone reliable nearby. She helps him carry his groceries in, marveling at how nicely he's done the place up. 
Kit gets her a drink, and she admits that it seems her grandpa has been doing better since Kit has been in his life. He grins at that, and explains it's taken hard work to get Tom to open up to him, but he feels like he's managing to make positive changes. Amy smiles regretfully, telling him she wants to take the positives as a sign that nothing's changed, but they both know better. Amy asks if there's anything she can do to help him, and Kit says she's already helping just by being there, but Tom has to make some changes on his own. They sit down outside on the porch, and Amy asks about Kit's life since she left. His mom passed away when he was in senior year of high school, and he made a succession of bad decisions which ended up with him destroying every relationship he ever had in this town. But Tom never gave up on him even though he was totally lost. Recently he's been doing much better and he's grateful that he's been given another shot. Amy asks if he wants to get a drink tomorrow to catch up properly, and he agrees although he says he'll have coffee. Amy's shocked, she remembers him as one of her best friends, but she barely knows him anymore. He smiles and says to remember the good stuff, like when he went through every one of her manuscripts back at school. They laugh, and it seems like the friendship between them is beginning to rekindle. Amy says that even her grandpa still doesn't see her writing as a proper success, and Kit shrugs and says it's because he's still holding on to his own dream of seeing her run his store. As she's about to leave, she mentions a loose step which Kit absent-mindedly says he's got to remember to fix. He meant to do it after Tom fell last time. Amy stops, shocked, because she's not heard anything about it, and remembers the nurse telling him to listen to the doctor this time. Kit didn't realize she didn't know. At home, Amy questions her mother about it, who says that she didn't tell her because it wasn't serious, and she didn't want to worry her. Amy accepts it but is still concerned that her grandpa isn't doing as well as he appears to be. Her mother tells her that they've even tried looking at retirement homes, but Tom stubbornly refuses all offers of help. After a lot of arguments she decided it would be simpler just to let him have his way and enjoy the time they've got left with him, rather than trying to force him to be unhappy. Amy gets a text saying that she's got a signing at a bookstore she used to go to as a kid. Her mom is really proud of her, and promises her that her grandpa is too, even if he doesn't show it. Amy tries to think of a way that they can help him. She returns to pumpkin everything. Kit tells her about the online ordering system he's set up, and Amy's impressed because her grandfather wouldn't even set up an email address a year ago. She helps Kit set up a window display when Tom himself arrives, and Amy offers to take him out to lunch as he's not supposed to be working. He's pleased to see her and Kit reconnecting, and says that at one time he hoped they'd end up together, but Amy teases him about it and drops the subject. She tells him proudly that she's had a team go into his house that morning to give it a cleanup and overhaul, and they've done grocery shopping, and prepared everything for their lunch. Tom's disappointed, though, saying he doesn't like strangers in his home. She says she didn't ask him because she knew he'd say no and she wanted him to see that there are options. He shakes his head, though, saying that she's the one that should feel bad for not showing up. He walks off and Amy chases him in the car, begging him to at least let her give him a lift. When they get in, the house is much cleaner, and has been organized and refreshed. Tom's less angry, seeing that nothing's been stolen but still says she was out of line to do it without his permission. She begs him to hear her out, that it could be a good solution, because something has to change, but he's resistant, saying change has never been a good thing for him. The day before she returns to the city, Amy's talking to her mom about Kit. She admits it's still a little weird between them, with her leaving and ghosting him after senior year when he'd just lost his mom, and they haven't discussed it at all. Her mom assuages her worries, telling her that it's understandable. They were kids and she'd just been told her grandpa wouldn't fund her studies. It's a normal reaction and she's sure Kit will be understanding. They stop by the coffee shop where Tom broke the window. Amy's mom is intending to give the owner Luke a piece of her mind for threatening to sue him over it. But when he comes out, he's a very handsome man who has her completely spellbound. She stutters her words, introducing herself as Lillian. And he smiles and takes her over to show her the fresh batch of donuts he's just made. She's completely smitten immediately and forgets her anger, following him. Amy rolls her eyes and takes a call from her agent, who tells her that she's got a spot on early morning television, and she needs to get back to the city to fly out to New York the next day. Amy takes the coffees, leaving her mom to flirt with Luke. She heads over to Pumpkin Everything, taking a deep breath, ready to have a conversation with Kit. She says she's got to head back to Philadelphia earlier than expected so she brought the coffee to him rather than waiting for their catch-up later. She apologizes to him for not being there for him, and says that she was a selfish coward who ran away when he needed her the most. She's got so much self-hatred over it that she wasn't sure she'd ever be able to face him again. To her surprise, though, Kit says he doesn't blame her at all. They were kids, and there was nothing she could have done for him. She left to pursue her dream and he understood that. He steps closer, saying that he never expected her to fix him, but that he did miss her very much. They share a poignant moment, and Amy asks if they can be friends again. He tells her that of course they can, but it'll require more visits and more coffees, to which she laughingly agrees. They hug as she says goodbye, and linger holding each other for a long time, both clearly feeling something that they're not prepared to admit. 
Kit watches her go, and she looks back over her shoulder at him, already wondering if she's making the right decision. As she sits in the car, about to drive back to the city, the local radio station comes on. It's run by the local retirement home, and her grandpa hates it, but it gives her an idea. She texts her agent, telling her she's changing plans, and heads over to Tom's house instead. She gets him to bring his records with him, and they head over to the radio station inside the retirement home. The radio DJ, Maggie, introduces herself and explains she's a rock aficionado. Amy says they're there to inquire about the open DJ job, and Tom seems to really get along with Maggie, loving the idea of having his own radio slot with his music. However, it's for residents only, and upon discovering that it's an attempt by Amy to get him to move into the facility, Tom storms out. She catches up with him, talking to him about the opportunities that are there and that maybe he could still have a good quality of life in the retirement village. He turns to her, angry, and says he's already checked out this place and it's unaffordable, even if he sold his home. She says he could always sell the store, and Tom's shocked and disappointed that she's even considering asking him to give up his life's work and sell it to a stranger. They continue arguing all the way back to Pumpkin Everything, where Kit is awkwardly trying not to take sides, when Amy gets a call. Carla is asking where she is, saying that the whole crew is waiting for her to do the promotion. Amy is struck with an idea, and asks Kit to film her among the displays at the shop. She records a short video explaining that she's back in her hometown for fall, and talking about her grandpa's love for the season, and the upcoming festival. She sends it over to her agent, and Tom has to hold back a gruff tear at the way she describes her love for the shop. He's beginning to realize that her chasing her writing dreams doesn't mean she's given up on her roots. Kit asks Amy if she wants to go to the farm with him to help prepare for Scarecrow Night. She says she remembers how much work it was, but agrees on the basis that her grandfather's wrist is still injured. They have loads of fun trying out all the attractions which have been set up for the festival, laughing and running around together, and Amy really begins to feel as though they're right back where they left off as teenagers. She receives a text from Carla saying that they'll do her TV interview at Pumpkin Everything. Kit's excited for her, but sad that she'll be leaving for the tour straight afterwards. He asks if she'll stay for the Scarecrow competition, and she's torn, saying she needs to be in two places at once. Kit stops and says that the solution is deciding where she wants to be. Amy pauses and looks at him, and there's a thick tension in the air as she says right now, she wants to be there. She doesn't need to finish the unspoken sentiment that it's because of him. The atmosphere between them shifts from friendly to something much more, and they both look away uncomfortably after a moment. Amy explains that she just wishes she could have her grandpa's approval. It's like he's angry that she's succeeded, and she's hurt by it. Kit is sympathetic, but tells her that she should focus on pumpkin everything, because that's what she and Tom have in common, and eventually he'll understand the part of her that he doesn't know how to relate to. Lillian and Luke meet up for lunch, to discuss Tom's liability to the coffee shop. She's being badgered by texts and calls, but swayed by Luke's charm, she turns off her phone and just tries to relax and enjoy her food without being hounded by her clients. Meanwhile, Kid and Amy are still at the farm. He talks more about his past, how badly he wanted to bounce back and be fine after his mom passed away. He got involved with bad things that hurt a lot of people, and his dad left town just to get away from him. He says that there was a light bulb moment when he saw her first book in the window of a bookstore, a reminder that he'd been wasting so much time. It was what convinced him to turn his life around. She's humbled that even from afar, she managed to have such an impact, and is quickly becoming charmed by him. She says that even though she's been successful, there are some things she's missed out on too, meeting his eyes meaningfully, but when he asks her to explain, she dodges the question. Amy asks Kit what he's passionate about. If he could have anything in life, what would it be? He looks at her longingly and says he thinks he knows what that is, but he's scared to reach out for it. She smiles at him, saying it's a good sign if he's scared, but he can't find the confirmation in her eyes that he's looking for, and he moves away, breaking the moment. The interview is being filmed at Pumpkin Everything in front of the whole town. She handles the questions really well on live TV, and her grandpa is impressed with her shrewd answers. He's beginning to see that writing isn't a frivolous career, but the self-promotion and marketing she does is all a part of it as well. Lillian reminds him that she's been doing this all along, he just hasn't been there to see it, and he realizes he's been absent from his granddaughter's life just as much as he's blamed her for being absent from his own. Later, Lillian and Amy are having a conversation, and Amy admits she's staying because of something Kit said to her about lost time. She's realizing how much she's missed home. The opening of Foliage Fest's Scarecrow Contest is the next day, hosted at Pumpkin Everything. People race to build a scarecrow as quickly as possible. Kit gets caught up in the competition and touches her hand, but she pulls away sharply, taken by surprise. He forgets that Amy is leaving that night, only to be reminded when she says she won't be there for the party. Later, they're sitting and enjoying some food on Tom's porch when Lillian admits that she and Luke are seeing each other. Amy teases her about it, but is happy for her. Kit says he's going to head off, and Amy says she'll be leaving the next day so she might not see him. He taps her on the arm and wishes her well, not wanting to engage in a drawn-out goodbye, and she watches him go sadly, unsure what to say, still too afraid of what's there between them. Lillian departs and leaves Tom and Amy to talk. 
Tom thanks her for hosting the interview at the shop and says that with Kit's online ordering system their sales have shot up since. He's going to have more orders than he knows what to do with because she helped to promote his business and he's ashamed that he's never helped to support hers. He wants to read her latest release. Thrilled that he's finally recognizing her talent, Amy goes to fetch a copy from her car for him and signs it. However, when she's gone, Tom gets up to fix a light bulb on the porch, and Amy comes back to find him collapsed next to a ladder. At the hospital, Amy is blaming herself for leaving him alone. She knew that something bad might happen, she had a feeling, but she left anyway. Lillian hugs her and tells her it's not her fault. Kit is constantly texting them from the store asking for updates on Tom's condition. After a little while, the doctor comes out and tells them he's going to be fine. Amy and Lillian go in to see him, and Amy tries again to convince him to move to the retirement village. But he refuses, even though it might compromise his safety, because he's not willing to give up his shop. Frustrated, Amy storms out and is crying outside when Kit shows up. At first he's alarmed, thinking there's bad news. But she tells him Tom is fine and she's upset because he won't change anything to take care of himself. Kit holds her, but she draws away, confused by her conflicting emotions for him. He confronts her this time, asking if she's going to stay away because of him, and she can't give him a straight answer. She can't choose between her national success and her book tour, and the life she would have if she acknowledges how she feels about him. He shakes his head, disappointed, and tells her he's in a good place and he hopes that she finds hers, then leaves to go and see how Tom is doing. Back in Philadelphia, Amy is signing books at a store. She goes to get a coffee afterwards and looks at the photos of her and her grandfather together, realizing she's no longer happy in the city. Meanwhile, Kit helps Tom into his chair and Lillian is putting away groceries, as Tom's returned from the hospital. Lillian gives him some brochures for improvements he could make to the house to make it easier to reside in. Tom's not willing to listen, though. When Lillian's gone, Kit sits down and asks him what his plan is. Up till now, he hasn't gotten himself involved, but it's time he said something. He can relate to why Tom doesn't want to let go of Pumpkin everything, because it's the place that set his life back on course, and he needs it just as badly. He says that no matter what he decides to do from here, Kit isn't going to let his dream die. He loves the store and will always make sure it's cared for. He goes to make tea, and Tom takes out Amy's book and begins to read it. Tom returns to Oakwood to try out being a DJ, and he's a total natural at it. Maggie says she could try to circumvent the red tape for him, to see if there's a way they could accept a non-resident. But he seems to have an open mind about it and says he's willing to take a tour and see. Amy receives a call from her agent saying that she's changed the tour schedule because there's one town that absolutely needs her to be there. Tom goes out to his porch and hands Kit a check for the entirety of the month's sales. He wants him to use it as a down payment to buy pumpkin everything from him. Kit's overwhelmed, and Tom claps him on the arm and says there's nobody he'd rather sell it to. Luke and Lillian are together making raffle tickets for the party, getting along very well. Tom sees Amy's car arrive and goes to greet her. He apologizes for the way they left things, and says he went through all her books, and he's been a stubborn old fool for keeping out of her life for so long. She's so happy that she's made him proud and that he wants her at his event, he'll always be her hero. They make up and agree that from now on they'll both be more supportive of each other. Tom introduces Amy to the gathered townsfolk, and she signs copies of her books all afternoon. He lets her know that he's sold pumpkin everything to Kit, and Amy decides she needs to go over and make things right with him. She congratulates him on the sale, and he says that he's terrified of being a business owner, but if he's scared, that must be a good thing. She sighs and admits that the one place she wants to be is there, right now. With him, Kit turns to her, and she takes his hands in her own. He promises he'll never get in the way of her writing, or any of her accomplishments, and he wants a chance to be with her, to make a relationship work. She replies that it's the scariest thing she's ever heard, but she can't deny how she feels about him, and her answer is a firm yes. They share a passionate kiss, grinning in happiness, as Tom, Lillian and Luke look over in surprise to see them embracing. Embarrassed, Amy giggles, then captures Kit's lips once again.